Hello, and welcome to OLA 2020. Thank you for joining us in this session on STEM Pals. My name is Jennifer Terry, and I am this year's chair of the Children and Teen Services Roundtable. I'm so happy to be moderating this session, and I am joined by Jennifer Forcade and Kelsey Williamson. Jennifer Forcade is the Community Engagement Manager for the Pioneer Public Library System. Under her direction, the PLS Maker Mobile, a customized STEM lab on wheels, has delivered unique programs to libraries, schools, and communities across three counties. The development of the Maker Mobile program has inspired innovation, engagement, and learning by bringing state-of-the-art technology, such as 3D printers, laser cutters, and CNC router directly to customers wherever they may be. Kelsey Williamson is the Children's Department Manager of the Pioneer Library System's Moore Public Library. Kelsey is passionate about giving back to the community by being a safe space for all children, providing engagement opportunities for growth and learning for library staff and community members, and connecting people with resources to help reach their goals no matter what their phase in life. I'll be back at the end of the session to ask a few follow-up questions, but now I want to turn it over to Kelsey and Jennifer. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We appreciate the introduction. So yes, welcome to STEM Pals. This is going to be a fresh take on STEM, collaboration, and workforce development. And like Jennifer said, my name is Kelsey Williamson. I'm the Children's Department Manager at the Moore Public Library of the Pioneer Library System, and we're excited to be here today. I'm Jennifer Forcade, and I'm the Community Engagement Manager at PLS. Hi, everybody. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'll start things off with our program. The goal of STEM Pals was to improve STEM literacy and confidence among middle school students by encouraging cooperation and friendly competition across state lines. Pioneer Library System and Prince George's County Memorial Library System in Maryland worked together to develop an eight-week STEM curriculum that involved various STEM challenges and inquiry learning-based tasks to address real-world issues. During those eight weeks, students were broken into teams and communicated with teams from the other library system via Zoom and Flipgrid. Teams shared their challenges and success with one another and provided encouragement and feedback on their projects. There were four modules of study, including weather, neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and chemistry with cosmetics. During the weather module, meteorologist Ryan Barnes from the National Weather Service in Norman shared his expertise and helped students construct windy city towers. They were made from paper and then groups worked together to test them for their ability to withstand as much wind as possible without toppling over. The next week, students made three-dimensional models of their tower using Tinkercad and had their models 3D printed. The neuroscience module brought Dr. Shaheen. He was the staff scientist in the rehabilitation medicine department of the clinical center at the National Institute of Health. He helped guide students as they learned about concussions. Students discussed their favorite sports and collaborated to design a device that would make the sport safer for them. To learn about artificial intelligence, students used their problem solving and critical thinking skills to, pro to program a Cosmo robot to perform a new trick. As with all their activities at STEM Pals, they recorded videos using the app Flipgrid and shared their results with their fellow STEM Pals. Now, Jennifer Ellis, uh, she's the president at the Cosmetic Specialty Labs here in Oklahoma. She joined us next and led students through the process of using the principles of chemistry to create cosmetics. Students interviewed fellow STEM pals to help them design custom-made lip balms and bath bombs, two different bombs now, mind you, for their new friends. And after making their lip balms and bath bombs, students exchanged them with their STEM pals in Maryland. Are we ready for the next slide? Thank you, Jennifer. It's a uh, it's exciting to hear it all. <laughs> hear all, all, all did over and again. It like it was so long ago, huh? Looking back on it, yes. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, kind of the concept of creating a cohort partnership. Um, so we were lucky enough to be part of an Urban Libraries Council um, STEM 
cohort group um, for, from library systems all across the country. Um, we were uh, chosen, but you don't, you don't have to have, be part of something like that to start something like this within your own library, um, no matter your library size, your community size, um, where you are and where you are with STEM, um, there's always an opportunity out there. Um, so kind of just to get started thinking about it, I think it's really important to kind of ask yourself, um, ask yourself, ask your library, ask your teams, um, what do you want to accomplish um, with this program? Um, and who do you currently work with that has similar goals or who is out there that has similar goals? Um, so I think just in general with kind of um, thinking about partnerships and um, creating collaboration and between your communities and um, to think to focus on that relationship building piece so ask yourselves you know who out there has similar missions to us um, so to really kind of maximize your opportunities for yourselves and for your partners and um, kind of make sure that it's you know valuable for both parties and that your and you know your goals and your um, missions are in line with each other and um, so really kind of focus on that relationship piece um, I think is really great to as a jumping off point. Um, so just some ideas to get you started thinking about this um, just think about other libraries within your own system. So like, for example, for us, for Pioneer Library System, um, I currently work at the Moore Public Library, but maybe I could partner with another um, branch in our library system. So something as simple as that, that you um, have access to and you can connect with um, right away to get started thinking about something like this. Um, Think about your existing partnerships. So um, think about your partnerships with your public schools that you might have or other after school programs or other entities um, like community organizations like um, the food bank or um, or again like the YMCA or other after school groups, um, any educational partners that you might already have. Think about um, what exists, what who could who could you collaborate with on this? Um, and then again, kind of and maximize other connections and groups that you might be involved with. Like for us, again, it was kind of the Urban Libraries Council gave us that, um, that window to start this, but think about other groups that you're involved with of ALA, reach out to other library systems. You know, it could be somebody at library system or another educational partner across, across the country or another part of the world. Um, think about your other existing partnerships like your um, local chambers um, or any other educational partners. So do, I just encourage everybody to kind of start thinking about it. If you're interested in something like this, just reach out and um, start the conversation, build that relationship. Um, you never know where it might take you. The sky's the limit. And as Kelsey said, um, this program came about through a grant with the Urban Library Council. The Moore Public Library, along with uh, the PLS Community Engagement Department, partnered with Prince George from Maryland and we worked with public schools and home schools to recruit middle school students to participate in our program. Our STEM career, career professionals uh, from Oklahoma and Maryland helped the students get an inside look at possible career paths. And we can't forget about the restaurants that provided the delicious meals, including pizza and sub sandwiches. They were a huge hit with the kiddos. <laughs> Oh yeah, they, they and it was so funny that um, the kids between the two groups, so the uh, Oklahoma team and then the Maryland team, they were so excited to share each other like what they were eating that day. So as we all know, you know, middle school groups, uh, sometimes they're hard to reach, but um, you know, they're excited. They, they want to come, they want to engage with you and they want to engage with each other and food always helps. <laughs> Um, they love those sandwiches. They love the pizza, um, and they they really got a kick out of like sharing. Like, what are you eating today? Um, and I would also echo kind of just the don't don't leave them out. Like, um, you know, because you might not have the um, the money in your budget to feed you know fifteen hungry tweens and teens um, on a weekly basis. Um, but just reach out again. You you never know. Um, there were several um, just local restaurants that I reached out to um, and kind of after I explained of kind of what we were really trying to accomplish within our community um, as part of the ask. Um, so we're really wanting to give, um, you know, middle schoolers a chance to connect with each other. It's after school. Um, they're hungry. Some of them come from, um, you know, low income families or they're um, at risk youth, perhaps. Um, so they were really um, excited Excited to partner with us and um, and many of them um, were able to donate um, meals to us so don't forget don't forget to ask and include kind of your why um, whenever you're making those asks whether it's your um, you know stem people you're bringing in or um, or food donations and 
and I'm sure we'll we'll get to this a bit too, but um, like Jennifer mentioned, um, the local STEM professionals that we reached out to, we really wanted to make sure that we, um, you know, pulled from both communities, um, what kinds of um, STEM activities are going on in your state um, versus what's going on in Maryland. And um, with everybody, we really wanted to be cognizant of um, bringing in um, a diverse um, group so that kids could really see um, what's out there. Can I see myself as a STEM um, professional, um, whether it's a male, female, or different people from, um, diverse backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities, um, all those things we took into account. Okay, so time to talk about why it matters. Um, our hope was to engage students in fun activities that might encourage them to take a closer look at STEM fields as possible careers. Our guest speakers and our featured scientist of the week came from diverse backgrounds and, and emphasized that our STEM pals have the power to be scientists and technology experts, engineers and mathematicians. STEM Pals gave participants the opportunity to improve their social skills um, in a variety of settings in order to practice empathy and public speaking. These skills were very important in the workplace and they'll enable students to be better able to build relationships with peers in their own community and with others through telecommunication. STEM Pals uh, also aligned with Oklahoma's ICAP program. Now, the term ICAP refers to career academic planning, and it's both a process that helps students engage in academic and career development activities, and a product that is created and maintained for students' academic career and professional advancement, follows the students through their uh, school careers. ICAP is a student-driven, ongoing process that actively engages students, enabling them to understand their own interests, strengths, values, and learning styles, helping them to create a vision for their future, helps them to develop individual goals, and prepares a personal plan for achieving this vision and their goals. I've got some, we've got some pictures that we can talk about next. All right, so these were some great pictures that we took at both locations. Um, some of the stories about why this matters, um, one student expressed mostly disinterest during the whole program, and she attended every week and completed the activities. But when asked her opinions on various topics during the icebreaker or other aspects of the program, she would often say things like, I don't care, or otherwise act aloof. However, during the final week of the program, she was one of the most focused students in teaching her mother how to use the Cosmo robots that the students had used in a previous week. And on the way out the door, uh, she asked a program facilitator if the program would be happening again and it seemed and she, she seemed very disappointed to hear that we haven't yet planned that part. Similarly, another parent expressed to a program facilitator that the program had had a very positive impact on her child's life. She shared, she shared that the student was having a difficult time transitioning to middle school and making new friends and that having this program to come to every week was something that the student really looked forward to and because it was easier for them to make friends and meet people in a different environment. One of our students voiced a great love for all things STEM, but she didn't have uh, many activities she could engage to prior to STEM Pals. Her mother stated that she and her husband were always trying to find some good options and were very excited when they heard about STEM Pals. She loved coming to every program, and her mother said she raved about the, all the fun that she had every evening. Many students talked about their friendships that they were able to make during STEM Pals, and on the last day, Pioneer passed out yearbooks with photos of them and their projects throughout the previous weeks. They all signed each other's yearbooks and traded contact information so that they could keep in touch after the program. It was really, really fun. Um, yeah, yeah, lots of great stories like that. And and as we as we went along, of course, this was a STEM program, but we really, really um, saw the the value in giving kids just the opportunity to, um, you know, grow in their social skills, connect, um, practice empathy, um, practice their presentation skills with all the various things that we had set up, and just really kind of built their confidence in in reaching out and making connections. And it was just really neat to see that happen over time with our group. Oops. Um, another thing that we also um, focused on in, in Oklahoma and more um, 
was also, um, we have a growing homeschool um, and charter school community. And um, so we really wanted to make sure that we gave kids an opportunity to um, interact with each other that might be a public school versus a homeschool. And we really had a nice mixture um, of reaching out to those groups um, to promote our program. And we really had almost like kind of a 50-50 split of homeschool kids and public school kids. Um, Cause that was a real goal of ours to kind of give um, all types of students and learners an opportunity to connect and learn and grow together. And we really saw that happen over time. Um, when, when we have lots of stories, but <laughs> another another quick one was um, one of our, uh, one of the homeschool uh, groups that came in um, I just remember overhearing um, kind of two of the families that kind of connected over this program. They were out in the library picking out books and things like that. Um, and one of the older boys, um, he was talking to the other family and he was talking about what they did that day. And this was, um, the cosmetics lesson where they got to um, interview each other um, between the two groups um, and then they got to create something to send to their STEM pal. Um, they were really excited about that and so it was just neat to kind of overhear his excitement explaining to the other family of what we got to do today and I just remember the the quote of oh it was really cool we got to send uh, we got to make gifts and send them to our friends in Maryland so I just thought that that was really neat and exactly what we wanted to accomplish and so it's really neat to see that um, in action. All right. Um, so as we all know, whenever you try something new um, like this, you, you learn a lot of lessons on the way. You kind of um, identify your successes and, and also move forward with um, what you would do differently with this type of program. So just some things that we learned along the way. Um, flexibility is, is huge <laughs> um, with this type of program. Um, I think especially for staff and for the participants, um, just really keep in mind, um, you know, you might have all these plans and you might have this, you know, um, specific outline and so the balance of being as prepared as possible but also um, learning to go with the flow. Um, there were many sessions where we um, you know ended up not getting to do our you know our, our survey at the end because they were so excited about this or we had or we made a fun mess. <laughs> so just be flexible with yourselves. Um, you know it's okay if you don't get to that that one thing if you know you're recognizing that oh maybe they're really interested in this, so we'll just focus on this piece today, and that's okay. Um, and like I said, um, kind of recognizing um, the value in the relationship building and the socializing, socializing piece, um, if that's uh, something that you want to see, give them time for that. Um, so it's, it's okay to adjust your plans. Um, so be prepared, but be flexible to change things up and let things go sometimes. Um, since we, um, you know, built our program around um, working with each other, working with our library system here, and working with our library system in Maryland, um, we relied a lot on technology and our, um, you know, our internet connections failed a couple of times between the two groups. And um, so you never know what you're going to get there. Um, I think just always be prepared that using technology, it might not always work out how you have planned, um, and that's okay too. And I think uh, another lesson we learned along the way was um, have a backup plan. Like, you know, if you can't do your Zoom call, um, have backup of like, that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll connect um, next week or we'll uh, give this information to the groups. Um, and again, as far as um, creating a cohort and a collaboration team, if you're going to build a program with another group or entity or another library, um, just set up um, the most effective communication tools that you can, because um, you're going to be working together. Um, you know, you might need to set up monthly meetings or, or weekly check-ins, um, whatever works for you and your team, but just make sure that you kind of have an understanding of how, how you all want to communicate um, before you get started and, and set up those tools so that you can um, be effective in planning together. Um, and then another thing that we really kind of went into um, this program with of kind of the um, challenge of retention. So especially with, you know, this age groups, we really wanted to focus on how can we best reach this middle school group um, along with STEM learning. And so, you know, with a public library, sometimes that's always uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to um, keep a group engaged, um, especially if you have like a series program. Um, but we really learned that, you know, it is possible um, and then really strategizing between your um, your two groups um, or if you're just planning a program like this on your own. Um, so Jennifer mentioned this a little bit earlier when she was going over our um, program plans, but we really focused on kind of modules. So we really wanted kids to kind of um, 
know what they were going to learn, know what to expect um, to kind of keep them interested and keep them engaged as we go along. Um, a real good example of this is um, our very first um, module was the meteorologist. Um, so like Jennifer said, they had the challenge of um, just creating with, you know, consumables, paper or tape, and creating their Windy City Towers. Um, and then it was really exciting because the next week they got to come and they learned how to 3D design and 3D print their, um, their towers that they built from the week previously. So that was kind of a, a good example of um, how we kept them engaged and how we kept their, those learning opportunities throughout. Okay, time to talk some about uh, our greatest successes. So first of all, student engagement. Uh, Zoom and Flipgrid uh, turned out to be really great tools to help our STEM pals interact with one another. Students' confidence grew from week to week in chatting with tweens from the other library system over Zoom, and some weeks even asking questions of each other beyond the icebreaker prompts, such as, hey, what's the capital of your state, or what's the weather like where you are? During the sixth week, students got to interview each other, like we talked about before, about their bath bomb and lip balm, and in this, this activity, they were able to start building individual relationships, talking to those individuals instead of just doing that kind of group work. One student even became really excited when he video chatted the following week after the interviews and remarked to the group that he saw his pal on the screen. <laughs> seeing the uh, STEM pal, STEM pal, seeing STEMs in a new light, I'm sorry, seeing STEM in a new light. So uh, the pre and post test surveys that we handed out indicated that students had a higher interest and more confidence in pursuing STEM careers after the program. Hopefully students saw themselves reflected in the guest speakers and the featured scientist of the week. STEM was seen as something challenging, fun, and worthwhile. We also used some really diverse evaluation methods. Um, first of all, uh, we did some talkback boards where students used stickers to answer questions like, um, I'm interested in this career. We would have these questions kind of uh, in different little segments here, and they would put their sticker under the one question that most suited their reaction to the, to the program that day. So those questions kind of changed sometimes, but they included things like, I enjoyed the presenter, or the presenter made me think about joining his or her field. I'd love to follow up with the presenter to get more information. Today I learned something new, or today I learned something interesting. We also had some informal observations. We had one staff member whose sole job was to circulate among the different groups and different students and observe things and kind of check those things off on a rubric. Um, she looked at things like body language or focus, uh, verbal participation, confidence and perceptions, and even fun and excitement. We want them to have fun and be excited while they're there. So uh, these different evaluation methods proved to be very helpful and helped direct our program from week to week. We could look at those things and make any tweaks to the program that we needed to for the next week according to the, the uh, feedback that we got from the kiddos for that week. So really excited and we got to share and see the similarities and differences with our team there in Maryland as well. Um, so this is just a couple of other um, photos from our program as we went. Uh, we, we get to need to look back and see these because it really was, we, we, we built relationships with um, these kids and I know they built relationships with each other. So it was just so cool to see that um, as we went along. And um, just a, another quick story kind of about um, also focusing on on the the relationship building and the we learned a lot with the um, within the urban libraries council cohort group of kind of focusing on um, the um, guide on the side approach rather than the sage on the stage um, so with that kind of the sage on the stage would be you know your your presenter or your librarian um, doing a presentation giving kids the you know the information um, and then letting them um, explore or do an activity um, versus the the guide on the side which is something that we really wanted to focus on of really making sure that staff and our um, our uh, science presenters um, were right there with the kids right there engaging with them and learning as we went along um, so and there's lots of research out there of how valuable it is for um, 
the kids to feel like your, you know, your teachers or your educators um, or your leaders are, are right there learning along with them. And I think that that piece also really helps um, staff because I think sometimes a challenge with, you know, STEM programming is sometimes of, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a, a coder, um, but just to kind of alleviate staff's um, nerves of, it's okay if you're not the expert and you don't have to, you know, know all the ins and outs of AI or all the ins and outs of um, neuroscience or artificial intelligence and um, coding and things like that. And so, you know, it, it's, and how valuable it is for staff in the, um, team leads to learn right there with the kids as you go along. You don't have to be the expert. You just have to be willing to, um, you know, learn as you go to. Um, so again, and, and also focusing on, you know, the trial and error of, of, of science and learning of um, and seeing the opportunities and failure and giving staff and kids the opportunity to see that. Um, so a neat example, um, I just remember on the very last day, um, like Jennifer said, we really wanted it to kind of be a um, an overview of all the things that these kids learned um, together and everything that they accomplished um, and to be able to share with their families what they did. Um, so the kids kind of got to be the experts um, in, on that day. Um, and I just remember one of the groups um, uh, chose the station of the, the Windy City Tower Challenge. Um, and they were like, oh, we uh, like, you know, we may have not we may have not achieved what we wanted to that first day. And that was the very first challenge that we did. They got back together and they're like, hey, let's do this again. Let's do it even bigger and better. And they accomplished what they really wanted to. So it was really neat to see that full circle um, and how they really saw an opportunity to try it again um, and uh, learn from what they uh, did before. So a couple of the resources that we learned and used um, throughout this program. Um, so like Jennifer mentioned before, um, we relied a lot on Zoom between our two groups um, to do some icebreaker activities, interview questions, um, those kinds of things. Um, Flipgrid was a really, really cool resource that we learned about and used during this program. Um, and I would say that also kind of this opportunity um, kind of set us up for where we are currently. I mean, back whenever we did this program, we had no idea that we would be in the current climate that we're in. Um, so it really kind of gave us a look at um, an experience of how digital and virtual programming and creating like a digital environment and learning environment could really look like. Um, so we're, we're learning about that um, as we go. And um, for example, we're looking at using Flipgrid for some of our digital programs. So to give kids an opportunity to try a STEM um, activity at home, um, video themselves of what they learned, um, and then share that with the group. Um, so I do have a quick example um, that I'd love to show you from our program um, of one of our, uh, our Flipgrid videos. So kids got a chance to um, present on what they learned about or what their favorite thing was. We had um, prompts and questions like that built into our Flipgrid um, programs. And then the following week, um, the kids would get to see their, their uh, STEM pals um, do their activities and what they learned about. Um, so here's a quick example. I hope you guys can see this. And here's our here's our mates. Three, two, one, go! Taking off the blocks. And this is a Cosmo robot, which I'll talk a little bit about in a moment. And he wins. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kenneth, and the my, the favorite my the favorite for me the favorite trick for, for me and Cosmo is the fist bump. Both. Fist bump. He's waiting, it's loading, just wait, now give him. <laughs> and here's the one that did the trick, his name is Matt Max. Yep. <laughs> So again, that was just um, a fun example of how we utilize Flipgrid. Um, and it, it really was um, also kind of part of our evaluation tools because we got to see um, 
did the kids use the, um, you know, the STEM terms and vocabulary that we really wanted them to um, retain over time and, and just to really see their, um, their confidence grow in their presentation in their presentation skills as we went along using the Flipgrid tool um, was, was really fun. And as you can see, they had fun with it. Um, I think most kids are kind of used to using a device and videoing themselves, but this really kind of made um, their interest in that and kind of made it um, educational. So it was really, it was really neat to see. And it was a wonderful resource that we're looking to use more and more of. Um, Tinkercad, um, I'll let Jennifer talk a little bit about that. She's the expert there. <laughs> Tinkercad is a free design software uh, that you can get online. Um, you just uh, sign in, and if you want to, you can create a class. Uh, they have some really cool tutorials that just show the basics of Tinkercad. And so we just walked the kids through those tutorials, and I was thinking, oh my goodness, it might take more than one session for them to do this particular challenge to take their paper design and create that uh, three-dimensional design in Tinkercad. But after they went through those tutorials, they were just like, I've got this. This is just totally up my alley. It's something I can do. Several of the kids had already used Tinkercad in school, so I was really, really happy to hear that. And um, it was just intuitive. They were just really, really good at it. And we uh, set parameters for their design, a certain size and everything, so it wouldn't take really long to print the, the, the models and stuff, and they stuck to those, and um, we got it all done in one session. It was amazing to see the kids go through there. Very little help from us, but as Kelsey said, we were all there just in, in case they needed that help or that little guidance to get across a bump they may have been an, encountering and stuff, but it was so much fun, and it just really blew my mind as um, to their ability to just take something and just run with it. It was just really, really fun. Yeah, yeah. And and I know, uh, Jennifer, you didn't get to see the, the next day, but um, like Jennifer said, she was able to 3D print their designs and then the following week, again, to kind of build that interest. Um, also, we wouldn't have been able to have the time to do it live, but um, Jennifer was awesome and she printed all of their designs and all of the cool things that they came up with whenever they uh, did their 3D Windy Tower. Um, and then the next week they all got to pick up their design. So they were so excited and they were just like, oh, cool, what does yours look like? Um, look what we did. Um, so it was just really neat to see that full circle and they just loved seeing what they, what they created um, digitally. It was really awesome. Um, another tool that we used was uh, Cosmo Robot. That was the one that you saw um, in the Flipgrid video from our Maryland pals. Um, so Cosmo was, um, a, he's like a, a coding robot um, learning toy. Um, you know, I, I'm sure we're all familiar with like um, Ozobots and um, Beepbot for Littles and things like that. Um, so this was a, a, a tool that we were able to purchase um, between the two groups. Um, and we really liked Cosmo because it is a, a, a pretty smart um, bot and um, is also pretty intuitive. And it was part of the, um, the artificial intelligence because um, Cosmo can learn as you go. Um, so part of their challenge with Cosmo was to um, introduce Cosmo to each team member. So you taught Cosmo how to learn your name and say your names. Um, so that was kind of their introduction challenge. Um, and then as you saw in their in their final videos, another challenge was to teach Cosmo a new trick. Um, and Cosmo also is um, an emotional little guy. So you can kind of throw in some social and emotional learning of is Cosmo frustrated, is Cosmo excited, um, and to, to talk about um, feelings and emotions. Um, so it, it was a really cool tool. Um, so I encourage y'all to, to look that up. Um, and then again, just as far as our communication tools between, um, between our two groups as we um, planned and worked through this program together. Um, we ended up relying a lot on Google Docs as far as um, coming up with our outlines, um, sharing any resources, and um, so we really used that a lot in terms of communication and sharing um, between our two cohort groups. Um, some other, other materials, um, I will just say, you know, you don't have to have the, the fancy technology, you don't have to have the coolest new robot to do, um, to do these things and give kids these opportunities and these experiences and engage them with um, STEM learning and scientific method and um, trial and error and collaboration and problem solving. Um, you know, use what you have. Um, like for an example, with our, our, our very first challenge, we just used um, paper, tape. Um, so 
you know, use, use those consumable things, um, use what you have and get creative. There's lots of resources out there where you can look and find these kind of STEM and design challenges. Um, a, a PBS Design Squad is a, is a great one that we refer to a lot with our school age STEM um, program. So there's lots of things out there to help you get started. Um, we um, were able to give each participant um, a, a copy of a book that we kind of built also built this program out of, um, Calling All Minds by Temple Grandin. Um, and at the very start of our program, we um, had a, a kind of reading book discussion di book discussion from the book. Um, and this is a really great book. Um, if you're not familiar with T Temple Grandin, um, she's a famous um, sci autistic scientist and um, she has lots of great things out there. Um, but within the book, she talks about um, growing up and, and being a, a different learner and, and making things fit into how she works. Um, and then those are some really cool um, take home science experiments within the book. So we thought that this was a really cool tool um, that we used and referred to and gave kids a copy to continue that learning at home um, with their families and with their peers. Um, again, as Jennifer mentioned, um, evaluation tools were, we really relied a lot on. We created surveys, we created informal um, observation rubrics, and that was really valuable to us of just to see, see the ways that you can um, document um, as you go, um, especially as far as kind of informal observations of, are they having fun? Are they using the, the terms that you want them to? Are they working together? Are they, you know, are they being kind? Are they um, problem solving together? Um, so all those things we were able to um, track as we went along. Um, and then like Jennifer said at the, the last one, we created a yearbook. Um, and that the also part of that was to give kids um, the experience to continue this learning. So we gave them um, other STEM programs within our library system that they could go visit. If you're interested in this, you might wanna visit this other library. And a lot of our kids did. Um, a lot of our kids from STEM Pals are regular users of, of um, other libraries and visit other programs now. Um, and then again, um, like Jennifer mentioned, the um, kids also use this opportunity to share contacts um, so that they could continue those friendships and relationships that they built along the way. All right, so that's it. Um, that's kind of an overview of our STEM Pals program. Um, so as you can see, um, Jennifer Forcade and my, our information is here. Um, Please reach out if you have any questions at all, if you'd like to see any of our tools that we used, um, if you'd just like to talk about it, um, we're here. So, so please, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Um, again, my name is Kelsey Williamson. Um, it's listed there, but you can find me at kwilliamson at pioneerlibrarysystem.org. Um, email me anytime. And I'm Jennifer. You can get me at j4k at pioneerlibrarysystem.org. If you have any questions about 3D printing, 3D printers, I've got some really good printers I could recommend to you. Any kind of steam kits, we've got lots of those at our library. I'd be happy to talk to you about anything steam. So give me a call or drop me a line. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Kelsey uh, for that fresh take, which is really what it was on, on STEM Pals. So I do have two questions. Uh, my first, did you meet up with the uh, Maryland Library? Were you able to contact them through is the Urban Library? Like how would someone who wanted to do something like this, how would they go about selecting, you know, the other library that they want to work with? How would you make that connection? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, like we said, we were fortunate to kind of be part of the cohort group um, for the Urban Libraries Council and STEM project. Um, so we were kind of all in the same room together. Um, and, and it wasn't part of, I will say, it wasn't part of the program to identify another uh, library partner to work through the program. Um, so we kind of just used this as, as an opportunity. Um, and we kind of identified Maryland as well because um, my branch manager and our um, our director um, had a relationship with this library system already, and and kind of echoing back to um, 
kind of making sure that your your partners are um, have similar goals are kind of at, at similar places um, they had already kind of identified that this is a library that they had a relationship with um, with their director and their staff um, and they kind of knew that we were on the same page with stem and where we wanted to to grow and um, and learn so I again I would kind of say um, you don't have to be part of a of a group to start something like this um, but think about your existing partners think about um, other libraries that you have relationships with um, about kind of that relationship building relationship building piece and um, do you have are you at similar places um, and then I would really just encourage you to, to reach out um, you know identify a contact um, and then uh, reach out and start a conversation awesome okay and then my second question is for your modules um, if it was a, like an eight-week or if you did a six week program, did you guys come up with your own modules or did you find like suggestions out there somewhere? We thought about our uh, speakers and um, after we confirmed that they would be able to help us, we pretty much built the modules around them. So uh, we had the weather module and uh, Ryan came and visited with us and we just found that Windy City oh. program out there and we thought, oh, that would go well with weather and and extend to the 3D printing. And Ryan was able to uh, stick around and um, help us during the actual uh, experiment of the Windy City Tower and offered some suggestions and, and assistance with several of the groups. Um, Lisa Wells, our director, had a, a friend who was the president of her own cosmetics company. And actually, no, that was uh, Aiden. Aiden Street set us up with um, the president of the cosmetics company and she was just really happy to join us so we built another module around her and again with the uh, AI and uh, the neuroscience our, our team members there in Maryland had their contact there so I, I would suggest you find your experts first and then build your content around them and uh, get those resources that you need to kind of fill it all out just you know, the Cosmo robots and other things. And again, you don't have to go totally tech. There's lots of steam learning to do with some very, very simple materials. Or, you know, um, you can reach out to, if you're a part of a system, you can reach out to your fellow branches and say, hey, you know, can we borrow this from you for this particular program or um, things like that. It's just, you know, building those content contacts and those relationships with your community members, with your STEAM experts, with fellow librarians and branches. Um, I think it's very important and, and boy, it sure does come in helpful and makes for some really fun programs. Awesome, all right. Thank you so much again for taking out uh, your time and presenting for us. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed this session for those of you who joined us and we hope you'll join us for many more. If you enjoyed this session, you might wanna consider joining the Children and Teen Services Roundtable because this is what we do in our meetings as we talk about what we are doing to engage children in our library settings, whether it's a public library or a school library to, to get them in and, and socializing with each other and, and just engaged in our libraries. So, Please remember to complete a session evaluation form in your conference app, and we look forward to seeing you again at another virtual session. Thank you.